Great. Well, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra. I'm broadcasting live from Southern California, Los Angeles. Today is April 16th, and um, welcome you all uh, at the Academy. So let's start with a meditation as, as uh, we have been doing different experiments. We used to have a half an hour meditation and then we went to just a one hour talk and then some of our friends asked me that they missed the meditation part so I brought the meditation back. So uh, we're just going to do a meditation as far as you're going to bring your attention back inwards to your own center and I would like you to do it as effortless as possible without really trying hard to make something happen. Just simply dive inside yourself by bringing your attention to where you are observing and you are where the source of your observation is, where the source of your hearing is from this place within yourself you bring your attention to that place simply by bringing your attention there you don't need to do anything you just bring your attention within yourself to one pointedness now if you find that place in your heart that's fine if you find it on your third eye that's fine you just bring your attention back inwards. If it feels comfortable for you to put your hands on your chest area, you can do that. You can put your hands here and just feel your presence, feel yourself. Feel the love that is here. Yes. 
just simply stay in this place that you're at without trying to accomplish anything allow meditation to take over you allow meditation to come to you you're just hanging out in the space you're present you're here but you're not active in your mind you're simply present Yeah, simply stay where you're at. By allowing, not trying, you just allow. Let it come to you. And just know meditation is your natural state. Silence is your natural state. Peace is your natural state. Love is your natural inheritance. It's not something you have to do anything for. It's already here.
And as I hear hanging out in this moment, <clears throat> I would like you to either put your hands on your heart chakra and come to this place of really loving and accepting yourself without any of your stories. And it doesn't matter what the chatter in your mind is telling you or what's going on. It doesn't matter. You come in this place, hold yourself and feel the presence, feel your own divinity, feel your breath, that you're alive and your aliveness is an indication that you are a divine being and repeat after me please I love myself I love myself I love everybody I forgive myself I forgive everybody because I'm love, because I'm light, because I'm God. That's why I love myself and I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes to love is what I say. Love is my true power, and I say yes to that. The very true power that you possess is your own love, the love that is here. And your love gets experienced and it gets revealed to you when you simply take a few moments and you're quiet, when you stop and disengage from whatever activities are happening around you, whether it's the news, the world, your family, friends, work, and you stop that and then love appears. You become quiet and love shows up. So I welcome you all here with me on another magical day. It's a miracle. Today is a miracle because we're all here and we're breathing, we're alive. Our technology allows us to see each other and connect with one another. This is a miracle. We get to see each other and we, through this union of being together quiet in meditation, in satsang, a transmission takes place. And we all connect into the unified field of oneness. The quantum field of oneness, which is here and it's available for us to access it and in that access we recognize that our hearts are connected with each other and we begin to feel the presence you feel the love that is here love that is here and this love that comes from me it comes from you you're the very source of this love 
of the presence of the beauty. But for that, you have to sometimes, you really don't have to do anything for something you already have, but sometimes you need to go beyond all this chatter and all these stories and all the stuff that is happening to recognize what you already have and to recognize that of your special abilities of the powers that been entrusted to you of all the gifts that you have right now in this moment the gifts that you were born with that indeed you have healing abilities you have the power for being the channel and healing happen through, through you. You can do that. You have done that in your life. You have psychic abilities. You have powerful intuition. And you have many, many abilities that are already built inside you. And you were born with them. And indeed, the more you pay attention and you recognize yourself, the more you realize that you're really not a small, itty bitty human being that's needy and lost. That's not really who you are. You're much, much bigger than that, much, much more expansive. And you have so much, so many different things, so many different talents that you already possess. And you use some of them, and some you're not aware of them. Maybe you use them unconsciously. But we somehow been brainwashed, we've been trained, programmed, to believe that we're small and we're not adequate and we're not good enough and we're not worthy enough. That's deeply ingrained in our psyche that we're needy, we're not complete. It's a feeling that we're not complete, which indeed is not true because you are complete already as you are right now you are whole and you're not separated from the divine being from god from the source from the creator from the grand spirit there is no separation and the fact that we're breathing and we're alive we're thinking we're capable of movements you're capable to eat something and digest it. You're capable to sleep, to walk, to think, to make decisions, to give love, to receive love. The fact that you're capable to sing, to write things, to create art, and share it with others. And most importantly, to be able to be caring and to give love and receive love. That by itself, to me, it's very clear that you are a divine being. Only the divine beings are capable of doing these things. Only those who come from the land of God, from the land of love, are capable of doing the kind of things that you are doing. So... I would like us all to pay a little bit of attention in our own abilities of how much we can do, how much we're capable to give and create. Instead of looking at ourselves as incomplete, inadequate, and not good enough, or 
going into this place, giving into this loneliness, thinking or feeling that we're lonely, we're left out, we're not good enough. Or more than that. But a part of the coming to the true powers that's been entrusted in you and to recognize that is there are different elements, obstacles also ahead of us of that falling into the ego and giving into this egoic part of us as sense of being separated or of a sense of, you know, as one part, one is that I'm encouraging you to recognize who you are, but also in, in the meantime, as you're recognizing who you are and your greatness and the amazing things about you is also not falling into this trap of the me, 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 or look at me, look at me, or I'm better than you, or look, look at me, my abilities as a, as a personal, uh, in a way that um, mistaken for this false sense of being in a way that comes with the crash means that I am, you know, egoically, I'm special, I'm special, I'm better than everybody else, but then in the same time can easily fall into this uh, trap of crashing down and, ex and making our egos really huge, which what I'm referring to is to recognize the qualities that we have inherited by being born and by living and especially coming into the world of spirit, of seeing your qualities and seeing the qualities in everyone else as well and acknowledging your own qualities and your own beauty and acknowledging it in others as well, recognizing it. And some of us, we like the way existence is, the way life is, that maybe in some area you're better and, and more talented in comparison to your best friend or your sister or your brother. And in some other areas, your brother or sister is better than you. Right? Number one thing is to recognize that, that you do have all these qualities and beauty and love and not falling into this place of judging ourselves and comparing ourselves to other people and ultimately put ourselves down and going into this place of hating ourselves and not loving ourselves. So recognizing who you are, so you don't fall into that trap. But then on the other hand, it could be the other, other part of too much falling in love with our ego as me, as being separated from the ultimate and the source. And, and then going into this false sense of loving myself in a narcissistic way. So there's, there is a, this middle path of recognition, of recognizing your divinity and recognizing who you are, recognizing that you're connected, you're one, and you're part of the grand, the, the supreme soul and the grand spirit, and you do carry all the qualities of the divine being. But also seeing that light in everything and everyone else, recognizing that.
And I'm very much sure you're capable of doing it. I'm very much sure that you have the wisdom to accomplish this and to recognize that. Because you have the intelligence, you're wise. And a part of doing that is, A, is to learn meditation, to be quiet, to have, to cultivate this um, quality of self-observation, not self-judgment, but self-observation of being able to come outside of yourself and observe yourself as you observe other things. And B is to continuously always come back in this place of love, of recognition of the love that is here. The love that you have access to. And sometimes it gets very enhanced because you connect with another human being and you meet someone and you love them. Uh, and then the love which exists within yourself gets really enhanced or the love you have for your kids or your parents. And when you come across this powerful, enhanced love, know that this love is coming from you. Know that you're the source of it. You're the source of love. And in recognition that you are the source of love, you begin to realize that it's not a conditional type of a thing. It cannot be taken away from you. It's always here. And the more you recognize it, the more animated it gets, the more powerful it becomes, and the more you're capable of giving it. And it flows even stronger by being able to share your love with other people. But first is you have to go beyond this self-judgment. You have to go beyond this self-hate. And not judging yourself. It's simply coming back to this one point. And meditation helps that. And coming to satsang, coming together into the unified field that we do, helps that. It brings you back. It sends you back home again. And as you do this, fear disappears. You go beyond the fear. You go beyond the worries. You go beyond the anxiety. You come back home into this present moment, into this place. Your attention comes back inwards. And then you remember who you are. And if you don't believe it, then look at your own qualities. Look at the things you're capable of doing. Whatever is your talent, different talents that you have. Whether, you know, some of us think like, okay, I have all these talents, but they don't translate in making money. But that's not the point. Or it doesn't translate in accomplishments in life. That's not the point either. It's the recognition of the talents you have. Take your time and take a look of the talents you have, of the things you can do, whether you're cooking, whether you're sewing something, whether you're making music, or you're cutting hair, or you're a nurse, or you're a teacher. Or whatever, you have a talent with putting colors together, decorating, fashion, the way you decorate yourself, the way you put your own makeup on your face. Whatever talents, you have talents. You're capable of creating. 
I would like you to pay attention to that. Pay attention on your own qualities, good qualities, the things you're able to do and share with other people. Take a look at it. And I guarantee you, if you look at it, you're going to find so many different amazing things about yourself. So many different things. And it will bring a smile on your face. It will bring a smile on your face. Because sometimes we fall into this routine life and everything gets repeated and repeated and we forget. We forget about the magic that you bring to life. Your magic. And it just goes through every facet, every area of your life. If you pay attention, you do matter. You have an impact. You have an impact in your surrounding. You have an impact on your family and friends. And even if you call a friend, simple phone call, ask him, and you're sincere in asking him, how are you doing, my friend? How are you? I have been thinking about you. So happy to hear your voice. And just that simple gesture, if it's coming from your heart, it has an impact on somebody you care for. And that changes things for them. And it brings them love. Because in that moment, you sincerely share your love with somebody you care for. And that changes them and you have that ability but you start with yourself you begin to see your own great qualities and you love yourself for that you love yourself instead of judging yourself instead of beating yourself up because you didn't go to the gym, because you're not losing weight, because you're not uh, saving money, because blah, blah, blah. You put, put that away and you'll always come back. Come back here in this moment, to this very moment. And you look at your good qualities, all the things all the magic you bring to life. And look at that. And you will be amazed, really amazed, of how many amazing qualities that you do possess. And these qualities that you do possess comes from your divinity. It comes from your connection with the source. It comes from your connection with God. It comes from your direct connection with the Grand Spirit. So you do have the Grand Spirit presence in you. And if that's the case, that means life, existence loves you for having its presence in you. And so if the Grand Spirit wants to live through you, life is excited to live through you, then you should be excited to live life and go through life with a different point of view with a different light because life has chosen you so you can choose life and say yes to it and live it and accept it and even embrace challenges that come on your path 
challenges come, things happen all the time. It's your attitude of how you treat it, how you say, you know, I, I have challenges happen to me all the time. So I can say, ah, oh, another time, ah, oh, life sucks, ah, oh, oh my God, I always have a bad luck and why it's happening to me. Or I can embrace it and say, I'm going to take care of this thing. That's fine. Let's find a way to take care of this problem. And in that, you keep expanding and getting bigger. <clears throat> you know, you really have this path in front of you. It's already set, it's already in front of you. You're on it, you're walking it. The support is here. You have your, your guru, you have your teacher, you have your inner guides, you have the spirits, you have your family. Everything you need is here. It's all available for you. Yes, Rosalie. Yeah, uh, say me. One, one moment, Rosalie. Okay. Okay. I can be mad on people when things have happened around me. I can forgive them. And I don't accept what they have done, so I just leave it there. But I can never, ever hate anyone. I'm not able to do it. I'm so happy to hear that. So same what people have done to me, and I am self. I, I see at myself. I do wrong thing myself, and I get mad and I get really mad, like a bitch. I tell right. you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I am not able to hate any. I understand. That's beautiful. That's a great accomplishment. I'm very happy to hear that. So, I, I experience, I feel the same way. There are times that I may get very upset, angry or whatever, and it bubbles up and I have to express myself either publicly, outwardly or inwardly, but then it goes away. Yeah. And it's not being carried anymore. But I can forgive, but that's the same that I accept the situation, but I can forgive it. Yeah, that's, that is truly the vision and to see uh, everything from the 5D, from the fifth dimensional awareness of people do stupid things, you know, things happen under circumstances and sometimes a lot of times they don't mean to hurt you. Sometimes maybe they, they mean to hurt you. But when I look at it, each and every person only operates from the level of intelligence that's available to them. They can never operate from something that they don't know or they don't have access to. So if they do something that they hurt me, I always look at it that this is all they know. This is all they could do. Okay. So then there's, then I, then I don't hate them. Maybe there's an expression of anger in a moment or disappointment, but there is no room for hate. I have never no. hated anyone. and I'm not going to hate anyone. Right. Beautiful. I'm happy to hear that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Anyone else? Any questions? I have a new person here. Hi, uh, Katrina uh, Derby. Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Connecticut. Okay. Is this your first time on the Academy? Uh, nope. It's actually my second. I came a few months ago, actually. Okay, great. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, nice to have you here. I really love saying about um about 
like the ego and kind of like inflating yourself, I guess, like following like a middle path. Yes. And I find like a lot of people get attracted to me that are like really inflated with their ego. Okay. So I guess, I'm not sure it's like a question, but maybe for myself, like how to recognize or manage or kind of see where that like that lesson is for me. Um, you know, cause sometimes that can be, I can be very sensitive and find it to be hurtful. Right. So let me see if I understand the first part of it. You mentioned that a lot, a lot of time, do people get attracted to you with a big ego? Yeah. Is, is that what you're, you're referring to? Yeah. And they'll be like, try to be, you know, kind of like really forceful in their words and kind of like, for me, it feels like I'm being like pushed around. Um, and so I really have to like push back and I don't push back the way they push back, but the, I don't like right. being spoken to and um, that in that way. So, okay. So let me, uh, uh, so let's say there is this person who's attracted to you and they want your attention and then they get very, they're not very nice when, when they can't get what they want. They want to get your attention. They can't get you. And then, then they're not very nice. Am I right? Right. Right. Exactly. Right. So I personally, the way I look at it when that happens, and if it's happening on, on uh, it's re repeatedly, I look at it like I turn things around and I just say, okay, what is it I really need to learn? What is the message here that this, I would have to attract this type of person or this kind of teacher? I look at it, okay, there's my guru has come in my life, I man or God manifested, and has come in my life and is representing something to me. And I just kind of look at it, not really looking at it in, in a matter of blaming myself that why is this being created? But I look at it that there is something, I look at it like there is a golden opportunity here that for a lesson in, in my life that I can learn from. And so I look at it that way. And then I say, all right, in this case, from what I understand from you, and you know, I may, I may not, I, I, I may not know everything, but I'm just referring to the information you've given me. Okay, so there's two things I do. One is I say, all right, this person shows up in my life, and they're pushing me, and then I look at it that is there fear inside me of really speaking my truth. Because a lot of times when I get challenged like that is about myself not being able to speak my truth. And, and coming from a background of being brought up to be always obedient or being a good boy and not wanting to um, disturb the apple cart and coming from this background that you know, you don't speak back to your elders or older people or authority. You just kind of eat it. Um, so then I get challenged in that way, or I used to, till I go into my power. I go into this place to see what's right for me. And if I be submissive and not speak back, then later on I feel bad about myself. I have resentments. Yeah. And then existence provides this uh, situation again until I go into my power and come back and say no or just say, you know, I got to tell you something. This is da, 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 da. And I come to my power to express it. 
And the way I express it, there's, there's different ways I can do it. I can do it from a non-egoic way or not angry. I may come with power, but I'm very centered. Even though I may come back and show being aggressive, but you can come back with force, but you are completely aware of your behavior. Mm -hmm. That is different than coming back from a reactionary place that there is no awareness in it. You're just reacting to something, whether you come back and you're angry and you push them back, or you're being submissive, but now there is no awareness in it. So it's just a, a robotic reaction. So it's okay if you come back and you come back strong. If the situation requires you to do it, but you do it from awareness. You're still very centered inside yourself, but you come back with force, but you're completely aware of what you're doing. Yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm trying to learn because the reason why I don't maybe always speak back with power, what like you're saying is, I'm associating it with my ego and being angry and I need to find that center. Right. That center right. The power without, with the coming from a non-egoic perspective. Yes. Right. Great. So, so you can see that one, you know, it basically goes back in your conditioning that you've been conditioned, uh, oh, you shouldn't come back and be aggressive or speak your truth because you should be a good girl. Or if you do that, that means it's your ego. You know, later on when we come on a spiritual path, then we want to be very spiritual. And then all of a sudden we're not speaking our truth anymore. And what existence does is it's going to create situation that someone's walking all over you. And it will keep happening till you rise and you say no. So really saying no, and I don't like this, and I say no to it or go, go away, is not really being unconscious or unspiritual. It's where you come from with that. Are you awake, aware of it, or it's just an unconscious reaction? Hmm. Whew. I have to meditate on that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you sit with it. You also, we have your email and you will receive a copy of today's uh, uh, session, webinar. And so you can look back at it again later on. Rewind tape and come back to this part and see if it resonates for you or not. Okay, great. Yeah, this was like a question in my mind for, for a few Great. Weeks. I'm, I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that it came out and we were able to talk about it. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. My pleasure. Hi, Kirsten. How are you? I'm fine. I'm very fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. to see you. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting with my dog. Okay. All right. <laughs> cute, cute dog. Yeah. <laughs> you like to listen to all this talk. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he feels the energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he, likes it. he likes it when you're in meditation. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, animals are very receptive and very sensitive to energy, so they feel like there is something uh, groovy happening. Yeah. So they dig it, right. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Hi, Annette. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Thanks a lot. 
Elka, tell us what's going on in Frankfurt. Oh. The weather is nice and I'm happy to see you in Frankfurt. <laughs> uh, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> it's well, nice that you come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited actually. I'm excited to come back. And, uh, and you know, it's interesting because uh, I was talking to uh, Shishi yesterday Okay. Um, and I was saying like, uh, this, this is, um, a strange, uh, tr um, tour for me because normally I don't go on a tour at this time of the year. And, uh, so, and I'm going to different regions, you know, from Norway, Sweden, mm -hmm. and then coming to going to Poland and Germany and France, which it's lower elevation. It's not as high close to the arctic and then going back to ore so it's like i was saying i i don't know uh what you know i have to i have to really be thoughtful of what what kind of clothing i'm taking with me because <laughs> it's going to be cold hot cold hot yeah. so uh but it's also very exciting about figuring everything out and getting to see everyone and coming back at this time of the year um, starting the tour on almost end of April, which I've never done it before. So it's, it's exciting. Mm. I'm excited. It's a new experience. <laughs> <laughs> like for me in Zetona. <laughs> What's that? I say like for me in, in Zetona, a great yeah. experience and, uh, yeah. Yeah, Amazing exactly. time. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so good to do these things. It is. It, it's always. Um, it's been my experience. It's constantly getting challenged with a new situation, and not you know challenged in a bad way, but you just have to uh, come out of your comfort zone and just be flexible, and mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, also, especially with this year, is that um, there's so many different um, things I'm doing. You know, I'm doing the healing training program that I love to do. And now I'm incorporating a lot of satsangs, a lot of uh, spiritual talks, and talking about 5D quantum awareness and operating from that place. And... Uh, as well as having my workshops about uh, returning to love, which is very connected to the 5D quantum awareness. So, uh, so it's, it's exciting because there's different themes of what I'm talking about and the areas I'm referring to, as well as the healing training program. So uh, it makes it interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. When I think about it, so it excites me. Uh, hi, Ralph. Ra uh, Raphael, I'm sorry. Raphael, hello. I can't hear you, your mic. You're, uh, you're unmuted on our site, so you may want to see. Something's not connected. I can't hear you. Do you want to write to me on the chat box? Okay. The, um, and I think it was a, a two years ago when I, um, well, originally when I started to teach the 5D quantum healing training programs um, after one year that I was teaching it I um, added the word awareness to it so I changed it from fifth dimensional quantum healing to fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness and uh, because what part is what I realized that the um, the healing modality that I teach it's could be extremely more effective and, and helpful 
and work for both parties if the awareness is always also is brought into it as and what i mean by the awareness is the if we learn uh we're not just focusing on learn learning techniques of how i can do healing work or or uh, whether I'm doing shamanic healing, psychic surgery, if it's hands-on healing, or it's, it's uh, energy healing, uh, energy work, or I'm using symbols. And there's a lot of wonderful different healing modalities out there um, that they work, and, and they're wonderful in, within their own respect of area and field. So, uh, but what I realized that your, the, the work, it will be extremely enhanced and more valuable if we also learn the way of life, the way of being, and we can incorporate that. Now, what I mean by that was, as you all, most of you who've been with me, um, you, you know that I spend a lot of time in all of my programs uh especially on a healing training program we spend a lot of time into operating from a quiet place operating from a place of silence of being quiet and accessing this place of love of coming to the self-love and and getting out of our heads and regardless of what kind of technique we're using, getting out of the head and coming into place of letting love dictates the pace. And recognizing that really, truly, it's love that heals things. It's not the modern technology. It's not the medicine. It's not the surgery. All of those things, they're valid and they got their own place. But love heals. Love is the ultimate healer in our lives. And without love, life is not really worth living. And, and I, was, I was fortunate to experience, uh, it's something of course I know and I teach, but every once in a while it's nice to get um, reminded like a few days ago, uh, my beloved uh, friend, uh, office manager, uh, Shishi, had experienced her, her father had some health issues and challenges and was taken to the hospital. And we were all concerned about his well-being and whether he was going to make it or not. And uh, Shishi and I were sending healing energy and... Uh, were holding the space for him and he went through a very quick turnaround and I think the fact that he went through this quick turnaround and he healed so quickly it was like the love that he received from his family of course I mean I'm on the side I'm far away and uh, I don't count myself into this equation but what I really saw is the love that uh, Shishi's family, uh, the sisters and uh, um, mom and all the close people were sending to his dad. And his dad just miraculously healed um, at age, I think, 84 or 85. And uh, from a very serious thing that, and a lot of times it can kill other people. But he healed up so quickly. And uh, I was surprised, like, Two, three days after that, he was in a critical uh, condition in a hospital. The next thing when uh, I found out when I talked to Shishi, she said, oh, yeah, he's driving, going to some, some uh, uh, doing some work, and he's cracking some jokes, and uh, he's, he's good. So to me, it indicates that really love is what heals and changes our lives and everybody else's and that is our true power and that's one of the reasons that I really emphasize on this part in in uh, our healing training program and every any other workshop any anything that 
I teach, I point out to, to this uh, element, to this really truth of our lives, that which is available to us, which is the love that is here, and we all have access to it, and it's our true nature. But it always starts with one thing, is to come back and loving ourselves and to bypass our mental thoughts, bypass our actions of what we've done in the past, which is none of it exists in this moment. Yes, all of it has formed your personality, your character, and you become who you are. But right now, in this very moment, if you separate yourself from your memory, which is only thoughts, in this very moment, and, and not go into the future, which future thoughts and whatever is still the past. It's all coming from the past. And you come back here in this very moment, and you just sit with yourself. All of a sudden, you can feel the presence of her divine being, her majesty. You can feel the presence right here, right now. The love, the love of God, the love of that, your own love, it starts to show itself. And every time you come back to this place and you recognize it, then it can flow out of you to other people. And that, that is what heals. Now, we learn all the techniques. We learn all the good stuff we need to know, whether we're doing shamanic healing, uh, hands-on healing, distant healing, sound vibrational healing, or simply not doing anything. And it's just your presence. That does the healing. Love. Your true power. So come back to this place. Remind yourself, remember. Because I know how challenging it is. It's very easy to get caught in your head. It's very easy to go into the world of fear and anxiety and forget and worry about, you know, your job security, money, uh, your family security, your relationships. Oh, what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? You know, all this stuff, it's easy to get lost into it. Uh, Raphael, just give me one moment. I finish up and then I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Um, it's easy to go get lost into that. But come back. Come back home. Come back here. Get into the habit of bringing yourself back here again in this moment. Separated from previous moments. Separated from any other future moments. Come back home. And just take a look. Hang out in this moment with yourself and just feel it. Feel the love which is here for you. When you disconnect from the world of thoughts and you come back here and you come back to your inner treasure and the presence in the present moment and you remember who you are again. You remember who you are again. And in that, then gratitude comes because you become grateful for everything you have. Everything you have. All the gifts that we do have. Being grateful for it. And then you operate from that place again. You go back into the world and you do what you have to do, whatever that is. But you come back to the center. You don't operate from fear, you operate from love. You don't, you, look, it's good. Awareness is very important. 
we want to have awareness in our decisions in whatever we do and yeah if there is danger is coming to you and fear rises that's not a bad thing okay so you're aware of danger coming and you're changing course that's not a bad thing i'm not talking about being reckless awareness is a good thing fear comes to the body in, in case that you're in a dangerous situation is not a bad thing it's there to protect you so you're aware of it but living life from fear and anxiety that's poison that poisons your life and we don't want that we want to come back home and only when you come back home to this moment and you recognize that you already have love around you and the presence is here then you become mighty and we we practice that we operate from that place in our lives this is what we want and this is the healthy way of living our lives and we all have seen it when we do that everything flows very easily in life and we're capable of handling challenges in life coming being in this place you know coming to the present coming to the place of love and understanding and wisdom it doesn't mean you're not going to be challenged in life challenges always happen but from what space you're coming to to deal with it that makes a difference in the quality of your life one is coming from fear anxiety from uh, uh, uh. that one is going to make your life suffering and miserable and the other one coming from a still still place collected and balanced place make life and the challenge is actually pleasurable and that's what we want we want to have a nice smooth ride through this life which there is meditation in it we want to live that life um all right uh rafael my brother hello can you hear me yeah i can hear you the only thing is go ahead and we may have to get into your question uh go ahead ask me your question and i'll see because we're already at 11 30. um well it was uh, a long time ago i on, i asked it uh, uh, why are we separated from this source and each other in the right. first place right okay why are we separated from the source and each other in the first place? Right. Well, in a, th this is a long, uh, going to be a long answer. Okay. So if you don't mind, we'll keep this for, for our next academy uh, because uh, I've already ran out of time. But uh, I don't know if I will ahead. be. I don't know if I will attend to the next academy. I understand. I don't know when our next academy is going to be, but I've run out of time. So I apologize for that. Uh, I wish the question came to me earlier, but uh, unfortunately we ran out of time. But in a nutshell, I just want to explain one thing to you. We're not separated to begin with. There is only an illusion of separation. We've never been separated. So it only looks like it. All right. Well, nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we're going to keep, uh, uh, Ms. Shishi, let's keep uh, Rafael's question, which is a great one. And, and, that would be the subject of our next academy and we can talk about it i'm not exactly sure right now where the next when the next academy is going to be because um, um but 
there will be next academy i believe let me look at my calendar right now and everything we're doing maybe i can just uh give you a date um next week i'm in hamar and the week after that it's going to be on the 30th i'm flying going back to stockholm so let's say um tentatively may 1st let's and i understand uh, yeah let's shoot for may 1st academy and i will be broadcasting from stockholm um that's and then uh i, I look at the calendar and i'm gonna uh figure out uh, because when I'm touring, I always have to pay attention on the day I'm traveling. And if I'm settled in one place and, and whether I can broadcast or not. But I'll come up with some dates regarding the Academy. Uh, Rafael, please come to our event in Stockholm. All of you who are in, in uh, Sweden, I invite you to come to my events. Um, we do... I'm offering, there's two free events on May 3rd and the 16th. And let your friends know. And it's going to be at the Bune Academy, which most of you've been. It's going to be in Seoul now. And uh, Pia is going to be announcing it. Ms. Pia, do you have anything to share with us before I wrap it up? Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's this event that you have the 3rd and the 16th. Uh, it's a free event in uh, Bion Academy, as you said, and then uh, the 18, but the uh, location, I get to lo the location tomorrow. We, and then yeah, have we, whole, we don't have a day. set location for the 18th yet, but we're going to be announcing it. Yeah, and we're going to have the whole day then. All right. And yeah. uh, we, you and I need to talk a little bit more about the pyramids in, around yeah, Ore. Absolutely. And, and then we figure out how we can have a day of excursion of mm -hmm. taking our friends there so yeah. we'll we'll talk about that too yeah so okay okay okay, okay. all right well nice seeing you all sending you lots of love and light thank you for joining me you are the light of my life by showing up and being here and you give me the energy and and the power and and the the will of wanting to show up so without you I, I would not be doing the academy so thank you for showing up love you <laughs>